Oh, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Brewcast. This is episode 58. Fucking hell, we're going places, boys. This Brewcast is just, it's its growing by the day. And right now we have a glorious, amazing, super sexy 69 subscribers. Of course, the ultimate number. Today, I'm going to be talking and doing a bit of a fight prediction on the Yol Romero versus a Rumble, Rumble Johnson fight. I am super psyched up for this fight. This is going to be fantastic. If I understand correctly, this is going to be at the light heavyweight, which means Yoel Romero isn't going to have to cut nearly as much weight for this fight, which is fantastic. We're going to get into it. Oh, no, it's going to be a heavyweight. Oh, damn. Fuck. Okay, well, I'm a little uninformed, but I've been focused a little bit more on the actual fighters than the exact weight, but that just makes this even more interesting. But before I get into that, guys... If you are looking for some sexy, sexy new clothing, please go check out the Brewcast merch shop. We have the Look at My Fucking Guns line of clothing. We also have, shall I compare thee to a scoop of whey by William Waspier line of clothing. If any of that tickles your pickle, then please go take a look at this beautiful, beautiful new line of clothing secondly if my internet would like to be a little bit faster please go check out the brewcast youtube channel we've got plenty of videos on there a lot of natty or nots and mma fighters and boxes a lot of fight predictions we do fight predictions for all the big fights coming up we also talk a little bit about the philosophy of being jacked and being competent and being able to defend yourself all those good things and obviously then some more comedy videos like whether johnny sins our boy who's uh, you know, been in every career line humanly possible is on the juice. Um, but now I think we should get into it a little bit. So, Yo Romero versus Rumble Johnson, guys. This fight's going to be crazy. So let's do a small breakdown, okay? Just in terms of the stats. Rumble is 6'2". Yo is 5'10". So this picture is a little bit deceiving. Rumble has the size advantage and the reach advantage. Well, size advantage, but... I think relative to his frame, Yol is obviously bigger. Um, I'm going to give Rumble the power advantage over Yoel. Um, Yoel, obviously the grappling advantage, I would say, um, and also a much more technical striker. Rumble is a very aggressive guy. He gets in there, he gets dirty, and he's super aggressive. And by the way, he still has my favorite sidekick knockout of all time. Um, <laughs> who was it with, uh, what's the guy's name? Stack, what's the dude's name? Um, anyway, where he sidekicks, knocks him out. It's, 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 it's crazy. But Rumble has power upon power. Now, Yoel's got power too, but he's a much more technical striker. Now, I don't think Johnson's going to land that sexy sidekick of his because Yoel's guard happens to be a little higher. So, you know, I think Rumble's going to have a tough time getting in there. I will say though, I've, Given Yoel the wrestling and grappling advantage, but I don't think he's going to use it. We haven't seen Yoel go to the ground purposefully, really, in any of his recent fights. He did technically take down Costa, but it was in the last 10 seconds of the round. Um, and I think it was on purpose just to score some extra points. Um, he really, I don't think he wants to fight on the ground specifically. If you guys give me three seconds. Sorry, just had to sort out some noise. Um, but um, he did not... He, he He's avoided going to the ground recently. I don't know if it's got to do with his neck fusion or his back surgeries or whatever. But he's definitely avoided going to the ground. And so I think this fight really in all likelihood is going to stay on the feet. Both of these guys. Johnson would definitely prefer to be on the feet, I think. Um... You know, given his sort of aggressive style, he looks for those knockout shots. Yoel's probably going to want to stay on the feet, but he can go to the ground if necessary, although I doubt he'll do that. That would probably be his greatest advantage is if he decided to do that, but I don't think he will because he wants that, you know, they want that entertainment value. It is better to, you know, the organization of the retired fighters <laughs> where they bring all the old men to beat each other up. Though Bellator is cool, guys. I'm sorry, I'm being a bit of an asshole, but... The way I see this going on the feet is Yol obviously has the tighter punches. He's got the better technique. Um, Rumble, I'm going to give Rumble the power advantage. And so what I do see is Rumble coming in 
to try to land those power shots. But now this is where it gets a little interesting. Kicks wise, I don't know what we're going to see here, but just going off the hand, since I am more of a boxing guy than an MMA guy. When you're a taller guy in boxing, generally speaking, you want to keep your distance and utilize your range. But Rumble's an aggressive guy. He's going to go in. He's going to want to get relatively close. And the problem is, is when you get relatively close for the shorter punches, generally the shorter guy can actually do better because if you're a taller guy who's too close, it's very difficult for you to make to to get as much power into your shots, right? It's a little easier for the shorter guy who can get underneath and go to the body, right? Go for the shovel hooks to the ribs, to the liver. Um, and so I don't know if being super aggressive is going to be the best idea for Rumble. Um, at the same time, we also have to consider that we've never really seen Romero actually fight at a weight where he doesn't have to cut. Because when he fights at 185, he, I mean, he, he's probably cutting a solid, like, guys, he's, he's probably cutting at least 40 pounds, okay? If not more, this guy is juiced to the gills. He is a behemoth, okay? He cuts so much weight, it's not even funny. But we never, but, and obviously that takes its toll on your capacity to fight, right? When you have to cut that much weight. So we don't know exactly what it's going to do to him when he suddenly doesn't have to be dehydrated when he goes to fight, right? Um, and that might actually give him a bit of an edge just power-wise because he isn't completely depleted, right? That that That's something to also consider. But this is going to be interesting just simply because it's more of a technical guy versus more of a power guy. But Yol has never been one to turn down a trading situation. You know, you saw him with Costa. They were trading shots. Obviously, Paolo was the aggressor there, but it's two bigger guys. Paolo is as tall as Rumble Johnson is. He's also 6'2". So it's an interesting comparison. Paolo was coming in, and you could make the argument that Yol should have won that fight because he did, I think, probably land more significant strikes, but it was very close. I still think Paolo should have won, but you can make the argument that Romero should have won that fight. And that was really them trading shots, especially towards the later rounds. Here's the thing, though. These are two heavyweight guys. Rumble's aggressive. This fight is going to be exciting for a round and a half. And then they're both going to shit the bed cardio-wise, I think, at least. And then it's going to become a bit of a slugfest, which is going to be actually fine since it's a heavyweight fight. Slugfests are fun to watch. Um... And so, but here's what I think. In that situation, I think that's going to give Romero the advantage because he's the more technical guy. Um, if he conserves energy better than Rumble does and within and by the end of the second round, Rumble is dead. Third round starts, Romero can knock him out just because he's too tired to keep going. Um, then again, Romero hasn't fought guys really who are in that heavyweight sort of power, you know, sort of tier. Because when you're fighting middleweights, they don't punch as hard as heavyweights. It's just a fact. It doesn't it doesn't work. And Rumble is known for the fact that he can punch knock off. But I think Yol's got the chin to withstand that. Uh, and he'll probably be able to evade most of those punches, similarly to how we dealt with Costa, right? Because Costa also is a very aggressive sort of style, although I wouldn't say he's anywhere near Johnson's level of power, uh, and he is a little more technical than Johnson. He's still an aggressive fighter, and you all dealt with him appropriately, um, I think. Um, um, I don't think he should have been up against the cage as often, but, you know, he, he, he was able to deal with that sort of pressure, and so I don't think he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna you know freak out when Johnson is coming at him. But this is gonna be interesting. So I think my final prediction, I think Romero is probably gonna win. Um if Johnson's gonna win, it's gonna be an early knockout. Um a lucky shot somewhere in the first round, maybe the second round. If Romero wins, it's probably gonna be a third round knockout, or he's gonna win on points. That's gonna be my prediction. Uh thank you guys so much for watching again. Check out the YouTube Brewcast channel if you'd like more of the sort of content. And check out the merch shop for some new sexy clothing. Cheers, guys. I'll see you next time.